Welcome to Tony's tutorial and today our discussion is on one of the most foundational concept in biomechanics not just in biomechanics in anatomy and any movement science this forms the foundational concept in this that is the body planes and axis through understanding body planes and axis and mastering it only then we can understand the science and complexity as well as the beautifulness of human movements. But getting into know that this is planes and movement, many among us think that um, that is going to be a tough task. I'm not able to do it. It is better that I memorize it. But that's not the scenario here. Forget what you have learned so far. Forget what you have heard so far. Here we are going to master the planes and axis in human body in the most simplified manner, but elaborate itself. By listening to this video and this lecture, I'm sure that by the end, all of you will master understanding human axis and planes and you won't have to buy heart it. So stay tuned and forget what you have learned so far and listen to this video with a free mind and positive spirit. We are going to do the planes and axes in the most simplified manner. Yes, the planes and axis in human body. Before introducing into the concept of axis uh, planes, I want you to know the concept of axis. Axis in human body, right? Even though the biomechanical science is a complex one and anatomy is a beautiful subject, still we borrow this from mathematics. This is actually the three-dimensional Cartesian coordination system which we borrowed from mathematics. Just go back to your 9th standard and 10th standard where you used to do, draw in a graph paper x-axis, y-axis, etc. We just borrowed it here. And maybe that is why this seems to be tough for us because that's a, a basics from mathematics. But no worries, this is not as tough as studying mathematics. In maths, you had the positive x, negative x, positive y, negative y, positive z, pos negative z. But here, we just have three. That is the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. Only three simple options. Let us evaluate which are that. Now, every one of us know what is x-axis. A simple straight line you draw in a graph paper that shows your x-axis. This is the x-axis. Now in human body, how can you show your x-axis? That will be a straight line passing from here to here. From your ear to your right ear to your left ear, if this is going to pass it like this. Through your neck, this is going to pass like this. Through your chest, it is going to pass. Through your hip, it is going to pass between the both hip joints. Every straight line that passes through the body in this horizontal direction, that is your x-axis. It is so simple. That is your x-axis. Now, what was your y-axis in mathematics? That was something you drew from the top to bottom, right? You used to draw this like a cross. <laughs> This is your y-axis, this is our y-axis, and this is our x-axis, right? So what is y-axis in relation to human body? A line, for example, our plumb, plumb line in poster analysis, a line starting from top to down. An axis passing from top to down, that is going to be your x-axis. But it need not be always your head. A line passing from here to here like this. That is going to be your x-axis. A line passing from here to here on your shoulder joint. That is x-axis in relation to shoulder. 
sorry y axis in relation to short term so y axis is the vertical line so that is known as the vertical axis that is also known as vertical axis right so that is so simple you had a y x axis which is a straight line and cross to it perpendicular to it you have another axis that is your y axis and what is your x axis if I had an enemy, he can come to me with a sword and he just peers from the back of me and it comes out. And that is going to be your Z axis, the anthroposterior, an axis which runs from back and comes out. Right? I put something for a rod from here and if it comes out to my mouth, it's going to be danger for me. That is going to be your X Z axis. That is going to be a Z axis. And since it is a two dimensional thing, we draw it like this. This is going to be our Z axis. Or as I told you, AP axis. Why AP? Because it starts from posterior anterior direction, runs in anterior posterior direction. So this is the basic concept that you have to remember. In human body, we have three axes purely three axes nothing like positive or negative we don't have to worry in it in foundation we need just three axes and that three axes are your x-axis which was purely what you studied in a basic 10th standard and science and math max and physics classes and you have a, a y-axis which is vertically downwards which is also what you studied and you have an z-axis which runs in this direction and so posterior direction even though I introduced you this axis, I'm not going to make it difficult for you understanding human moments through axis, but we are going to focus on the planes which are most important. So forget about this axis, but then why did I tell this? You'll understand it later. So forget about this concept of axis, you have mastered it. There are only three axes and that is X, Y and Z axis, right? Now, the most beautiful concept in biomechanics, you might feel it tough now, but if you master it, you will feel this as the most beautiful concept in biomechanics. The planes of movement. Like three axes, we just have three planes. So, if I ask you, what is shoulder flexion happening? We'll discuss that. You have only three options, option A, B and C. And there is no other alternative. There is no none of this. There is no all of the above. If the movement can take place only in three. So need not worry, just have to master just three concepts and you're going to figure it out, right? The first one, every one of us know. Maybe you may have by heard it. You might have remembered it. You might have understood it. That is the sagittal plane. That is the sagittal plane. The first one, right? What is the second one? The frontal plane. The frontal plane or coronal plane, right? And last one is the transverse plane. Last one is the transverse plane. So in human body, you just have three planes, the sagittal, the frontal, and the transverse, absolutely three. And remember, we are going to study this motion, remembering or conceptualizing the body is in its anatomical position. If you don't know what is anatomical position, just refer back and come back. We are going to discover, understand and study in anatomical position. Now, the first plane, that is the sagittal plane. What do you know about sagittal plane? All of us know and all of us have remembered it like this. It's a plane that cuts the body into two equal halves. So two halves, not equal. Two halves, right and left half. Absolutely right, you are right. That's a plane which cuts the body into two. But do we need to buy at it? Let us examine it. For example, if I am having this as a sword or as a stick or something like that, 
and me myself is dummy I am going to cut myself from here top to bottom with this line like this and what happens it divides my body into one left side and one right side that I plane which divide your body into left and right or two halves is known as your sagittal plane it is not axis it's not just one line it is a plane it's a broad concept it's a plane for example you have a dummy over here you have a dummy over here right and i have a sword in my hand and my hand shows the such a plane i move from top to bottom like this right very beautiful i get a right and left side that is the such a plane you know that this is a can you imagine what is it this is actually a wall in my room this wall if i am standing in the center of this wall if i am between this wall what will this wall do it will divide my body into two halves one half will be on that side and one half will be on this side so this wall in your room uh, when you, if you are in a room just check this wall in your room is actually a sagittal plane it's a plane it's it's like this wall a long one which divides your body into two now let us imagine what the sagittal plane is for example remember one more thing every motion in the human body occur parallel to the plane every motion in the human body occur parallel to the plane now i have a plane over here let me remove my watch i have a plane over here that is a sagittal plane right now i want to produce a motion in that remember the motion is taking place parallel to the plane I want to move in sagittal plane and that plane is actually cutting me into two halves. This is the plane. This plane is existing here. I want to move my limb on this. Imagine this is the plane. This wall is the plane. I want to move parallel to it. See, I can move it like this. That is your sagittal plane. You can move on that plane. That plane actually divides it into two halves. From top to bottom. Right? One more example which can make you understand. Imagine this book is going to create a sagittal plane. Okay. Now I am locked inside a room like this. I'm locked inside a room like this. My neck is actually locked. I cannot my move my neck uh, neck to the left, right? I cannot rotate it. I am in a sagittal plane doorway. I'm locked in a sagittal plane movement lock, uh, room. I have only one option. What will be my option of movement? I can just nod like this. Yes, please come. Help me. Help me. Hello. This is the only motion. That is the neck flexion and extension. See, this happens in which plane? The sagittal plane. Right? If I am placing my book over my trunk like this, this is also the sagittal plane. I cannot rotate to, I cannot flex to the side, both sides, this uh, walls are the, I cannot move. I have only one option that is to move in this plane. What is that movement? I can flex my trunk, I can extend my trunk. So trunk flexion and trunk extension is going to be a sagittal thing, right? In shoulder, you have this one over here, right? I place this book, this, this is the sagittal plane. Now I have to move shoulder, I cannot go for abduction, this plane will block it. I cannot go for media rotation, data rotation because this plane will block it. I can just move along with this plane like this. I can move along this plane that is shoulder flexion and shoulder extension. Right? That is your sagittal plane. One more example, not just the human body. Remember this book. This book. Actually, this book is placed in this position, in this space. Now this book has to move in sagittal plane. What is the motion? How can it move? It can move like this. Front, back, front, back, front, back. That's it. That is the sagittal plane. Right? We'll see more examples later. Don't worry about that. Now you have the frontal plane or the coronal plane. The sagittal plane divides the body like this. Okay? Two halves. It can run from here to here. And take my hand over there and here. But we are looking in anatomical position, so we'll say it as two halves, right? This wall is the sagittal plane. And now you have the coronal plane or the frontal plane. What is that? A plane that 
passes from your head like this. If this is the sword, oh my God, this is the sword. It cuts your body into front and back. If this plane passes like this, my face will be here, my back of the head will be in that position. Two halves. That is going to divide your body into an anterior portion and a posterior portion. That plane is known as your coronal plane. For example, see, I am penetrated. See, for example, somebody sticked with me, stick me, uh, somebody glued me with some gum on this wall, right? And if this wall, if I am in the center of this wall, half portion of me, me, me will be in the front and half of my portions will be in the back. And this plane will be running. This plane which runs from top to bottom like this, it runs like this. That is the coronal plane, right? For example, now, instead of that sagittal plane doorway, I am placed inside this, I'm sticked inside this one. I cannot move my hand over front to back because it will penetrate, it will block with this wall. I cannot move. I, can, I cannot rotate it like this. I have only one possible motion. That is to move along this plane. Remember, the motion is parallel to the plane. I can move along this plane. For example, I can move along this plane. I can move along this plane. I can rotate, I, uh, go for my hip abduction along this plane. I can flex my neck along this plane. I can next flex my neck along this plane. See, that is it. That is your coronal plane. A plane which starts from your top to bottom, which runs like this and divides your body into your front and back portion. That is your coronal plane. And remember, motions can always occur parallel to the plane. Now I want to do a motion in the coronal plane. I cannot do like this. The coronal plane is actually running like this. How I am standing in such, that same space, frontal direction. I want to move in this coronal plane. I can move it. I can move it. Trunk, I can flex it like this. Trunk, I can flex it like this. I can move my neck like this. I can do this one like this. And in the legs, you can lower limb, you can do the same. That is your coronal plane. Right? And the same example with the book. Remember this book? This has the freedom to move in sagittal plane like this. Now what about the coronal plane? The book is actually in the coronal plane. It can have the possibility of moving like this. This can move from side to side. That is the coronal plane movement. For example, let us have this gesture. The gesture is placed like this. We want, if you are asked to move in sagittal plane, move it from anterior to posterior, right? Front to back. Move it in the sagittal frontal plane or coronal plane. Move it like this, move it like this. And the next one we'll understand it later, all right? Every object in the human body, or in our human, every object with, we, with which we are adjusted or which we are using daily, is having a plane and axis. Everything, for example, you have this pen over here, you can imagine this is its sagittal plane, right? This is it. If it is moving like this, it is in coronal plane. If it is moving like this, it's in the transverse plane. So when you get an object, if you want to master it, practice which is its sagittal plane, which is its frontal plane. But for you, for that you need this transverse one. Yes, let us do that. The transverse plane, simple here. Yeah. It's simple. A plane which actually cuts your body like this. If this is the sword, up and bottom, which runs horizontally, that plane is known as the transverse plane right if a plane runs like this that is actually a transverse plane for example i'm standing in my room and i told you this wall is the sagittal plane this wall is the transverse plane and the floor in which i'm standing is the transverse plane you can lift it up up and up and bring it like this or the roof on which i'm standing or which is on my head if it is coming down you can imagine that is a transverse plane. In fact, that roof is the transverse plane. For understanding that concept, let us take that book example. Frontal plane, sorry, sagittal plane, coronal plane, and many of you are experts in doing this one, right? Oh, I'm not much expert. This one, eh? that is, that plane in which this sort of action happens is actually a transverse plane. This is a transverse plane movement, right? 
that is a transverse plane motion. For example, some if you are watching this, she's standing on a sitting on a table. You are moving your hand on the table. That is transverse plane. That is, you are moving it parallel to the ground. The transverse plane motions are parallel to the ground, or you are moving it on the ground, on the earth, on the floor, on the top of the building, on the table, or whatever on which you are sitting or standing. That is your transverse plane. So these concepts are very simple things. One is the sagittal plane which divides into right and left or two halves. One is the coronal plane which divides into front and back. And one is the transverse plane which divides into upper and lower. To imagine transverse plane, always remember your floor. If somebody asks you to demonstrate a movement in the transverse plane, remember you have to do it in the floor. Imagine that you take up the floor up to here. For example, if they are asking in the shoulder, take the shoulder. Imagine that you have the floor over here, or you are immersed in a water. You have this water as the floor, and you have to move in it. What's the motion? You have to move parallel to that. Neck, you have to move parallel to that. Right? Everywhere you have to do parallel to that. Remember that every time motion happens parallel. And now we are going to take this concept a bit forward. How human motion takes place. Human motion takes place, right? Examples of motion. Examples of motion. That is actually the sagittal plane. You have the coronal plane or frontal plane and transverse plane. Always remember this basic rule, movements happen parallel to the plane and perpendicular to the axis. Here you need the axis. Here you need the axis. Now, if they, somebody asks you, demonstrate a movement in your shoulder in sagittal plane. By now you are able to understand this ball is the sagittal plane. I have to move in this wall. Beautiful. The person moved in this wall. That is shoulder flexion and extension is an example of sagittal movement. In elbow, elbow flexion and extension is an example of sagittal movement. In neck, I have to move in this one. This is an example of sagittal plane movement. In trunk, I have to move. This is an example of sagittal plane movement. Now, which axis? The axis is actually the perpendicular one. The axis is actually the perpendicular. For example, you had how many axes? Three axes. That's why I told you this earlier. The movement is like this, okay? The first axis, just let us take from back to forth, is passing from posterior to anterior, anterior to posterior. For example, like this, that is your x-axis. The movement should be perpendicular. I cannot move this one. See, it is actually happening in that axis. It should be perpendicular, right? So it's not in the x-axis. The movement should be, can I take it y-axis? This is, should be passing from posterior anterior to down. No, it is actually parallel to y-axis itself. Now I have the other axis, that is the x-axis. For example, see, the x-axis, I'm moving in the x-axis. I'm moving in the x-axis. This is the perpendicular one. That's for the sagittal plane movements always occur in x-axis or coronal axis, x-axis or coronal axis. Sagittal plane movement, if you want you can by heart this one. You can imagine the planes very easily and if you want to know the axis, just remember if it is a sagittal plane movement, it will happen in x-axis. For example, this is our hip. The hip motion, hip flexion, this one, hip extension is actually in the sagittal plane. If I am passing this uh, axis like this, this is the y-axis, vertical axis, it is not parallel to this. If I am passing to this one, it's not going to happen. But see, actually the axis is something, it's a line through which this can rotate, this can go for its motion. See, here you can feel it in this axis, this is being moving if this is there if there is no axis it can fall down so imagine this is a rod axis can be a rod in which this movement can take place so understand the x axis movements are taking place in the sagittal plane now what about the coronal axis if you have understood this very easily 
you can, if you understood it you can figure out what it is this is coronal axis in hip it is the abduction in hip the abduction shoulder it is the abduction it should be perpendicular x axis is parallel what is the axis y axis it's not going to happen it is going to happen in the z axis see this has the line see this has the imagine this has the line in which this motion happen this axis that is the z axis or ap axis so coronal plane movements always occur in the ap axis this is a fact and this won't change and now you have the transverse plane the last one is the transverse plane transverse plane movement what is it it is actually a rotationary movement medial rotation lateral rotation medial rotation lateral rotation right that is the rotatory movements where can it happen where can it happen right see this one is actually your coronal plane movement and this is in the ap axis now this medial rotation that rotation can happen in this y axis in this vertical axis medial rotation lateral rotation will happen so see the beautiful one medial rotation and lateral rotation is going to happen in your y axis medial rotation and lateral rotation is going to happen or transverse plane movements is going to happen in the y axis or vertical axis y axis or vertical axis so this is the fact this you may if you want you can remember by heart or whatever it is or you can understand it is such a plane movement that axis is x axis it, because it's always perpendicular coronal plane movement that axis is ap axis transverse plane movement it is y axis right the three axes and three planes for example this is your coronal axis this is your transverse axis and this is your sagittal axis for example if i want to show a sagittal plane movement you can imagine like this this is your sagittal axis this is your coronal axis this movements like this and this is your transverse axis movement so shoulder reflection happens in the sagittal axis sagittal plane shoulder abduction happens in the coronal plane and medial rotation and lateral rotation happens in the transverse plane the same thing in elbow elbow flexion extension in the sagittal plane if there is pronation and supination you have to imagine here you have to imagine the anatomical position pronation and supination happens in the transverse plane in the wrist you have to imagine this is in the transverse this is in the what plane anatomical position wrist flexion and extension happens in sagittal plane similar to this one wrist flexion and extension happens in the sagittal for your visualization i'm moving in this from the anatomical position to this one sagittal plane radial deviation and ulnar deviation is going to happen in the coronal plane right finger flexion is happening in the sagittal plane finger abduction is adduction is happening in the which plane actually the coronal plane right every human body movement you can visualize in planes neck flexion extension is happening in sagittal plane this one is happening in which plane coronal plane trunk flexion you can do in sagittal plane this one you can do in coronal plane you can rotate your trunk and that is happening parallel to the ground and that is your transverse plane right and what about your hip hip flexion extension similar as this one sagittal plane abduction adduction very good coronal plane medial rotation lateral rotation every joint what i want you to do as after this session you have to imagine the other joints which we haven't discussed knee joint ankle joint inversion inversion plantar flexion dorsiflexion and every single motion that you can perform imagine which plane it is happening first it may be difficult but correlate this you have only three planes if you master at least two you can figure out the third one and this is not a tough task this is a beautiful task where you can visualize from your body with a clear cut evidences clear cut explanation demonstrate you can do it in your body itself if you are going to study the hip joint complex you cannot demonstrate the you cannot figure out or palpate you cannot move 
go inside the hip joint and study. You have to use uh, the dummy models and so on. You can just visualize. But this you can actually do yourself. You are the perfect model for this. Utilize your room, your walls. This wall is the sagittal plane. This wall is the corona plane. Your floor is the transverse plane. I could, I could explain all the planes and all the examples for you, but that is just spoon feeding. But I believe that you need to do yourself. And in the comment box, give your answers. Where does plant deflection, dorsiflection happen? Where does inversion, inversion happen? You can Google it and give the answers, but that's not what is required. You should imagine yourself. Where is the trunk rotation happening? Where is anterior tilt, posterior tilt happening? Where is lateral pelvic tilt happening? All that moment, pin me in the comment box. And let me see how easy you can figure it out. It's, it's just simple. It's just, just very, very simple. Create some models, study with that. Understand the axis and the three cardinal planes in human body, which is the sagittal plane, this one, which is the coronal plane, this one, which is the transverse plane, this one. It just as shown in this one. This, it is just as easy as I demonstrated. Just only this much. So that's all about the foundational concept in biomechanics because every joint human moments you are going to utilize this planes and axis. So don't by heart it for God's sake. Utilize the brain. You think, imagine, and this is so simple, as simple as plucking a hair. You can master it. Just do it. Okay? And in next session, we will be moving on with the posture and then the gait discovery the human posture so stay tuned with my channel if you haven't subscribed kindly subscribe and click the like button if you enjoyed this video and if you have any suggestion definitely your answers please pin me in the comment box and if you feel it's not it's not good to pin in the comment box and others should not see yes it may be in the instagram or facebook page